Hello, everybody. How are you doing? Welcome. It's Brenda Schwader here to Saurita Casita. It's good to see you. Um, let's go. We're going to um, going to try to make um, some ear wires. What I thought I would do first is just kind of talk about the anatomy of the ear wire, right? I mean, you know, it's one thing just to go to buy these as findings someplace, but then you start making them your own. You're like, okay, so how, you know, what, what do I need to do to start making these on my own? And what do I need to know? Well, obviously they need to work with your body, right? So um, what, we, what I'm doing here is I just you can see that this is generally this this a very easy uh, French wire right French wire but we can get some length on and you can see here that this very bottom piece here is can be a varying length or, or um, inner dimensions so right here what I've done is that I've, I've got this one going around um, it's just an inner dimension of one eighth inch, which seems like it'd be fine until that seems to seem like you can drive a Mack truck through it. <laughs> you would be surprised. This is a one sixteenth. What you can fit in there. You can fit 16 gauge steel through here. No, not 16 gauge. Probably like 18 or 20 gauge. But anyway, be cognizant of that because sometimes those little things are what's going to make your jewelry look um you know, much more professional, much more spelt. And then, um, <laughs> it's so funny, I'm like, here it is. Okay, so and then we can play with this dimension here. All we need really for our earlobe, this is where our earlobe sits, right, is about a quarter of an inch. And that is a comfortable, um, you know, um, amount to be in your, uh, to be fit in your ear, you know. And if you're working on, which we will be, right? It's generally very bottom of most round nose players, okay? So that's kind of a good, um, you know, thing to remember there. But if you want something that's got a little bit more, <laughs> more or just a little bit different shape or whatever, or you want to work with something that is a lot different shape, maybe this is a little bit different than that, you can do that as well. Uh, for those of you who have the jig, so this is um, the quarter inch peg, right? And this is the equivalent of this guy right here, right at the bottom. This is a little bit bigger, but that's kind of, you can see here about what we're talking about. And when we get to these other shapes with bigger, a little more flair, right? Hey, Kristen, it didn't work. Kristen, you're trying to work with me. It's just, we were, okay, so a little segue here. Kristen and I were talking about how we like everything hardwired in. And um, my, everything was working fine. And then the connection, the Bluetooth connection just kept disconnecting, disconnecting. Arr. Okay, anyway. So, so we have a number of different shapes and sizes for that area. And it just gives, uh, as Kristen said, a little bit more flair. Um, the last one that you saw was done with, um, this is a peg for the, now that's a jig, with a half inch oval. Okay. But I was looking at some pieces that my friend Annie Pennington, who uh, works for Potter USA, um, she, her, kind of her signature ear wire is something that's got kind of corners at the top. So she kind of likes having them come out of the ear lobe and it has a little bit of corners here. And so you might use something at the top like this. So instead of, right, having these guys here, you might, and this one's just on the diagonal because of the spacing here. I just wanted this to be a little uh, closer is maybe you would use something like this. <laughs> so hard. Where's my top down camera when I need it? <laughs> it is, and, I, and you know what, Kristen? I kept reconnecting it and reconnecting it and it just kept booting back off. So we didn't wanna burst everyone's eardrums. So here we are without again, but we will get this. We will get this, I know. So, um, okay. 
So I thought what we would do is kind of segue back to making these ear, ear wires uh, and these fancy built-in ear wires. So much fun. And again, the part, the, the thing that works well with this, are all the gods aligned, right? And all the stars or whatever, is that we have this sort of little dip in the heart between the heart lobes. And then that also kind of really worked with that bicone as well. So absolutely love that. So um, kind of move this back here. I think what we're going to do, we're going to get that out of the way. Many cords. We're going to go down here so you can see. And da -da -da -da. let's see if we can see this a little bit better. Uh, okay. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be taking, right, these are all of the patterns. And if you guys want to grab these, um, they are at that John Bede uh, Facebook um group which is called i always have to close my eyes to think about this it's called uh bead projects and pan pdfs from john bead on facebook and it's just uh very easy to go there all of these are free on there and if you want the jig version just go to the etsy site that post that link that i've already put up and that one will be up there as well all of these when sarah puts them up for the week they're always in the featured area so they're right there on top but if you're looking for something from other weeks or whatever then just go to um uh you know the patterns and P uh, patterns um uh, now that's a jig patterns or you can grab you know another John B. pattern on that segment of the shop. Okay, so also all the written instructions are there, everything for you guys. I didn't do written instructions for the ear wires because I think they're pretty, uh, pretty understandable. But if you ever need those, let me know. So what I thought we would do is I made this one version um, of the red, this red one here. Do, 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 do. And there's also a couple versions that I thought you could also just do like a plain one. You can kind of see behind here. There's just a very plain little loop or a little dip. Or you can make this this one here with a little loop-de-loop -loop in the middle. So the, I like to give you uh, guys a lot of different options so you can see what you like best. So, but I thought first what we would do is just kind of grab and just do this built-in ear wire one. Um, and so you can see how that's done and how to load that on. Now, obviously, what's holding this on, you guys, is this area here. So what we're going to do is we're going to build this part down here first. And we're going to hammer all that. And then we're going to load everything on. And then we're going to um, uh, actually just... Um, hammer that to finish it. So for those of you who haven't been tuning in lately, we've been working with all this fabulous aluminum wire. It's so gorgeous and it comes in two different gauges. We're going to be working with the 18 gauge today um, and this is available and through one of those links. <laughs> Did you have to leave Leanne and come back? The Yes, the, the uh, the sound is gone so welcome back and thank you for your perseverance and patience all right so um i know here from my pattern that the built-in earwear setup this one that is right here is going to need about seven inches of wire um and so i'm just going to kind of chop that off here and i'm just going to use this pattern right here to go ahead and do that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make this tiny, tiniest start off with my round nose pliers. And actually, let's see here. I want to take, I want to get this trued up here. Okay. There we go. And just make this tiniest, tiniest of, it's always steel wire around here loops with the very tip of your round nose okay then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to keep following this along right on the uh, the pattern here 
And so generally what I do, when, when I like to make a, a loop is that I would make this like a, uh, I call a lollipop on top where it's coming centered off. But in this case, to keep it like a P or a Q is going to work for me because right away it's going to go up and around that, um, um, that first lobe of that heart. And I know here that this is a 3 16 actually. So I'm going to kind of like let that, Kind of mark that on on my pliers. I'm going to make that first lobe, and I can always make it a little bit bigger if I if I need to. Yeah, that was my my thought is that that might be a little small. So then just going to go back in there and make it a little bit bigger. And you can always just keep you know just just keep matching it up to here. The thing about having um, the jig, and now that's a jig, is that all this setup is done and then you just basically kind of go around here. But if you don't, it's not that, it's not the end of the world, right? So I'm going to grab my chain nose because I know I want a really, now I'm coming down here to the peak of this heart and I'm going to just put that exactly where I want that bend and make that bend right in there. And then you're just going to keep following up and around. If there's another way to do this too, you can kind of get the, the you know, the rough shape in here. And that's not too, too bad, right? And then just kind of true it up, kind of finalize it, not with the chain nose. <laughs> How about we true it up with, yeah, with that great round nose. Nice. And you know what, guys, you can always just kind of go back here and nudge these a little straighter if you want. And if you want your, your point to be a little crisper, just kind of get back in there with the edge of that chain nose. And your pliers are your friends. Here's where I know I can even kind of go back in here um, to just kind of getting back in there to mark this and then bring that all the way back up and around. This one you're going to go all the way around. Like I said, the very smallest part. So you've got kind of this cute little, little tiny, tiny loop-de-loop -loop in there, which is kind of fun too. Especially if you wanted to go ahead and maybe just even, you know, kind of uh, anchor those. You would need to um, do it with something other than wire, though, because this is the, this is the type of, um, I mean, smallest gauge that comes in this aluminum. I'm kind of wanting to get, go back in here and make that a little nicer. There we go. I'm liking that heart shape. Cute, right? Okay, so this is the point where I usually forget, and I'm so excited to load those beads on that I go ahead and do that, and then I say, oh, oh my gosh. Or I mean, actually just, um, sorry, I actually just finished the, the earring, and then I can't get my beads on <laughs> because we have this big U in here, right? Hi, hello, Sharon. It's so nice to have you here as well. So I'm going to grab my bench block, right? And I'm what I want to do, though, is bench blocks and hammering aren't always really great for um, overlapping wire. So I'm going to separate those out for a little bit and go very gently where the the wire is overlapping itself and then I'm also going to harden this area where I know that those beads are going to be underneath and then I'm going to just kind of put that back in into play here then I'm going to go ahead and add my first rondelle here 
No, I think I'm going to match it up. I'm going to go, because I only have so many beads, I'm going to take that 10 millimeter bicone. Remember, this is all Preciosa, gorgeous stuff. And then I'm going to take, this is the 10 millimeter large hole, large hole rondelle, place it on there, and just keep building. Now, if you like, uh, you know, lots of this, we can actually make this one taller, right? You know me, I always like to change things up. Last week it got me in a little bit of trouble. But uh, this one we just did the one in between with the two um, beautiful pieces. This time we have three of the gorgeous pieces and um, the bicones and then two of the rondelles in between. Okay, so in true form to building this, you know, you're going to want enough room for your ear in there, but fear not, that will work. <laughs> and so basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of cheat, not really cheating, I'm going to put this as far down as I possibly can and move that all the way around, right? And I'm going to bring this off here for a second. And you can see here, what I would did here is that I used that same, whoopsie, there it goes, of course. Um, that same little tiny peg in the middle here, that matches my nail polish, and use that to make that jaunty angle. I always like to use as much stuff as possible. Um, so, putting, because putting the, doing the setup is the most important thing. Hi. <laughs> things roll it's it's all live broadcasting right so here we go anyway I'm kind of wanting to make this a little bit bigger because I see that there's not a whole lot of room between so I'm actually going to see if I can't make that even bigger there we go there we go and then I like having a nice long um, thing here myself because I don't use those stopper things. And I'm just going to make, um, and I like to have a lot more chance for that bead or that earring to stay in my ear, right? Okay. Then at this point, you're going to take this back up. Let's see if I can. Uh, thanks, Sharon. Um, and I'm just seeing these comments <laughs> come in from upside down here. No, the coating doesn't come off. Um, and you can see I'm not really wailing on this either. But it's really a, a nice enameled coating. And I'm, but I'm not using, you know, this is this is a nylon head here. And um, and it's it's not um, it's not you know sometimes they can get kind of beat up, okay. Then um, as kind of a I don't know if I've been showing you guys enough of this stuff. If you have a wire rounder, go ahead and use that. Otherwise, just give this a little a few little um, taps with your needle file, and on the end so that it's not going to hurt your ear going through. Let's see if I got any of the, any of the comments here. Um, does the hammering help to harden the wire? That's exactly why we're doing it. Thank you for that. Is that especially with this aluminum, we have a really, really soft wire, which is great for working with. It's so easy to form, but um, you really need to harden this up so that it's good. Look at that flash. That's pretty darn cool. Let's try this. Wondering how well does the wire keep its shape? Does the hammering harden? Pretty much guarantee it will stay that way. Leanne, it does. Now I'm not gonna I'm not gonna lie to you, the aluminum is still very soft. It's not like you know my steel that I usually work with. Um, but I was surprised at how cool. I mean if you're, in, especially for earrings, you know, these don't get a whole lot of wear and tear, especially at the 18 gauge, but they're fine. You know, I mean, I wouldn't shove them in my purse. <laughs> I'd be careful with them and hang them up after you're done. But 
especially if you kind of want this really fun uh, saturated color and you know aluminum is really if you're on a budget this stuff is awesome so so you kind of get the idea and I'm trying to have to um, I've got one one side that's a little bit different than the other I could have gone a little bit better with my thing but you get the idea there and I like how this little loop-de-loop -loop holds uh, the beads up you know so they're not so they have a little bit of um, of I guess just a little bit of spacing between there and um, you know and then and then they're all just sort of sitting up there like a little crystal totem pole <laughs> Leah said she needed to wake up. You are a sweetheart. Always, I bet you're one of those people that the that the um, always looking on the positive side. Okay, so basically, I don't know how much more we really need to do if we wanted to make this into a head pin instead of making this built-in ear wire here. You're gonna just make that plain loop on top, right? And if you just want the charm, there's your little charm. I would say for the charm, though, we're definitely going to put the two loops so that we have something to go on. Um, I will show you here. So this is the one without the loop, right? And it's just um, about a joint in here. I'll, I'll open it up a little bit for you guys so you can see. So that's just open. So it'll work, you know, and especially in this kind of format here. Um, but if you want to get a little fancier, which I think a lot of us do, that's the way to do it. Hi, Kara. Good to see you. Yes, yes, it is. Thanks, Leon, for that. It's, it is great for... Um, for asymmetrical um, studies um, and earrings. I'm coming up with these goofy words here. Um, so I thought what we would do is actually make an ear wire too, right? And so let's go ahead and do that. And I'm going to take this down from here for a second. And we'll make an ear wire so that we can wear this one. And we'll have two, speaking of asymmetric ear wires, two. Oh, I put the other one back in. I left the other one out. <laughs> Old one ear, one ear wired Brenda. Um, so let's go ahead down here again. And let's go ahead and make um, not this big one because I think we've got some length already here. That always surprises me because I always like longer ear wires, but this would definitely be a shoulder duster, right? If we looked at, we use this one and then, and then we hook this earring on there and that might be what you want it, you want. Um, but since we've already got some length on here, let's just make this one here, but let's make it with this little tiny loop here because I want to show you that that will fit around this 18 gauge. And so um, looking here, I know that I need four to six inch length. I'll put this other earring back on um, to be able to make that ear wire. And I'll just cut that off. <laughs> Shoulder dusters. Yep. I think those are really, you know, they kind of come in and out of style, right? But so basically what I've got here is about a quarter of an inch in the middle here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take about this four inch wire and I'm going to put it um, at the very back, well, center it, right? And then I'm going to take both of these and come down, okay? There's a lot of different ways to make ear wires and with this one again I'm having this bottom peg do a lot of the work okay so I'm gonna come down and I'm gonna try to match it up here I'm gonna do one side at a time and instead of making this eighth of an inch which seems like that would be very little right we're going to make a tiny, tiny loop at the bottom. I'm just going to mark that here with my plier. 
and bring that up and around. And glue my plier. And at that same area, I'm just going to make that jaunty angle that I talked about. I love that, saying that jaunty angle. You guys know if you watch me for any length of time, that's a Kate Richburg term. And I just think it's it says it so well that we're just going to use this to create that little bit of an, whoopies, oh, I'm surprised it stayed on there, a little bit of an angle right there. I'm going to save my cutting for the, the <laughs> you can't cut with a round nose pliers. Here we go. I actually put it back. So I like to have probably about three eighths of an inch for a lead in. But, you know, all this stuff is subject. This is just really so it's the, the lead to your earring. I think I forgot to say this on the anatomy. Is this part that is leading, putting it through your piercing. And then this one, I'm just going to cut where it starts to overlap the other part of the earring. Always careful to put my ends places. I guess when we have little cats and dogs and we just really like having our eyes, <laughs> you get in the habit of doing that when you're doing wire. Um, and I can see here that I've got a little bit of of a dent here that I don't like. So I'm just going to go back and straighten that out a little bit more. And then I'm going to do the hammering. I'm kind of just making it a little bit of a U. So the hammering also makes everything on the same plane. It makes it nice and flat, right? And I always say that the hammering is also what makes it start to look more like an earring than a um, piece of wire. <laughs> and again, I'm just going to take and just give that. I like to be very careful with this because you're basically rubbing off the coating and I don't want to rub too much of that red off, right? I'm just going to take a little little brush off. You're basically removing metal material. And so and if you, you know, take off too much of the red, you can just file it down and start again. Especially if you have left a nice long sort of lead. And then give it the the finger test. You don't want any burrs when you're going through. And then I'm just going to basically open and close this around um, around this head pin that we made or the earring part. And actually this is a little one and I know that I've got more room to work with here. So I'm just going to open and close this guy here. Add that one on. And close that and I always give it a little bit of a, a tester okay now the other thing is so this is going to be face front right so we can go back up here so if I you were so shocked when you first learned you to make make their own earrings jump rings and other components instead of buying a baggie of 10 for three dollars <laughs> me too me too my love I was like what and then I could make my own shapes that's the cool thing about about that is uh, I could put this on. I put it on wrong um, backwards because I wanted that little that cute little uh, loop de loop on the front. So let's move that. <laughs> Any of you guys making along with me? Let's open and close this. Put it back on the right way. And then we'll put them both on and see what you think. Super cute. Now, the cool thing about this, and even if you wanted to just add um, a heart charm at the bottom and make this part just um, 
just like a, a you know a link is that if you like a lot of kinetic movement in your earrings you can put as many places as you can put a connection that will dangle will give you more more movement especially if you're going to be working with this cool flash there it goes <laughs> um, so you can kind of see there's the one that's red and it will not be hidden with all that flash going on there works better if I don't look at it I feel it better you can see with my my feeling so they're a little bit different uh, you know lengths but pretty darn cute if I do say so myself <laughs> I just wasn't done with hearts this month you know what I mean it just was like I just need some more loving <laughs> so those are so pretty cute now um also what I wanted to mention too is that we've got this face front and there's always a decision with earrings right if you want something face front or oriented to the side okay because you never know how you're going to meet somebody so if you did want this oriented to the side you could move this change this orientation of this jump ring or this loop right here to the side so I'm holding this and I'm just going to move one thing and keep the other one and then that will make that a side wearing earring right so you can you don't see it from the front but you'll see it from the side hi Debbie good to see you okay did I miss anyone's um questions I'm hoping I'm seeing everyone let's see I'll scroll up uh, Sharon says 18 gauge or 16 are better to work with so this one is 18 gauge aluminum which you generally wouldn't get 18 gauge to be an earwear right and to be able uh, so that's sort of the thing about 18 gauge and this just depends on so we couldn't use 16 gauge for this um, and sometimes just the the difference in um, is just an aesthetic. I gener I tend generally tend to like chunkier wire, but not for everything, right? Right. Uh, bench block great for over hi Leanne. You says you're new. Welcome. Great for overlapping wire. I'm not sure what you're asking there. Are you saying? yeah let me see here <laughs> um so i'm glad you asked that coral because now that's jig is not sabbatical right until i can get a new distributor manufacturer whatever but um i didn't i can't believe i forgot to tell you guys this uh what i did is i put everything at least at 50% off there's so little left but there's some uh, eighth inch uh, pegs in there there's a, actually pretty many triangles um, so go in www.brendishwriter.etsy.com and grab the rest of those I'm just clearancing them out until they're gone so um, yeah lots to uh, lots to memorize there um, so I want to just remind you guys, let's see here, let's see, da, 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 da. do, uh, if you can't find something you need from John B, do email them, info at johnb.com, and they'll do their best to help you find it. As I said, these smaller um, bicones, um, the SKU ends with a dash 17, all sold out in some places, I think on that craft shop. Um, and then for a lot of the, the now that's jig pattern templates and uh, for those kits that are on sale and for the pegs that are on super duper clearance um, you want to go to brendishwader.etsy.com um, and always if you want to first look at free templates and bead projects and PDFs from John Bead uh, Facebook group um, just a load of them there. Carmi and I, Carmi is the marketing 
um, director for John Bead, she was saying how unfortunately you can't have uh, photographs um, in the files, so you're going to have to um, really pay attention to the names of the things, uh, especially if we get a few um, weeks down the road and everything starts to get a little bit more buried. But um, they're all in there. They're all in there for free. So that's the cool part. All right. Let's take that off of there and go back to our comments. Uh, do, oh, thank you, Kara. I am furiously making the kit ready. I want to make sure that I have the final done before I get the kit ready. But do you want to see the beads? They're over there. I can get them. They're gorgeous for the bead one. So they're going to be a, a bead version and there's going to be a metal version because I just couldn't decide and I thought, why? So hold on. Oh. They're over here. <laughs> so I'm crawling around my studio because we're doing the limbo around course. <laughs> and these are all in cellophane. But aren't these great? I have a silver version. I wanted to see how it would work up in silver and gold. Um, so these are iris beads. These are, um, John Beads Crystal Lane line. So yummy. I don't think we're going to use those tiny ones, but basically we're, I'm going to, what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you like a little mix, right? Um, cause it'll be fairly intuitive, but you're going to need different sizes to get into different areas. Um, and these are um, opaque silver or gold iris beads. Um, and this is a rondelle as well. So, so cool in different sizes. Here's the big ones. Let me see that. Saw it here first. Since Kara asked, you can all thank Kara. <laughs> I know, right? All right, my loves. Any other questions, let me know. You know, I love being with you. And one of these days, see, I'm not a real big, um, tech AirPod person. So once I figure these out, I think I'll have it figured out. Either that or I'm going to have to have, um, I'm just going to have to hardwire everything in. And that's going to be it. <laughs> we'll figure it out. I know we will. <laughs> so cool beans, cool beans. All right, you guys, thanks so much for joining me. I hope you're going to have a great day and we're going to stay away from the cold. Everything's going to be warming up. This is actually one of our most wonderful seasons right here. I'm, I'm, um, I was telling someone else that I really don't mind those over 100 degree temps because I just know I'm not shoveling snow. <laughs> I'm not driving around in it. <laughs> Oh, yes, they are. <laughs> and um, yeah, I'd rather have that and turn the air conditioning on than be in the cold. That's just me, though. So but wherever you are, so much love to you guys. Guys, thanks for putting up with the audio and the maybe not so great um, visuals. I know. Love the Mary's match, but are not identical. Loved watching this. Have it saved. Oh, Leanne, you're so sweet. And uh, I think that is one of the cool things about streaming to YouTube, too, is that all those are going to be with the pictures right underneath. So mwah. thank you so much. Appreciate it. Um, all right. I'm going to stop yapping. I'm going to say goodbye. We'll see you next Thursday. Oh, I just want to show you what we're going to do this th next Thursday real quick again. So we're going to be showing a little bit of a threading technique. Again, this is a little bit more of an uh, ab armature thing that we're just going to be just doing actually a wallet stitch to get those beads on there. Aren't they fab? And you can see that you can either do the any or the outie <laughs> version, but that's just one, uh, one continuous um, piece of wire. And let me see actually if I have... 
Oh, Brenda. Let's get rid of that. Uh, let me see if they're in here to show you the real earrings. Yep. So, for instance, here's the real earring. Ta-da! Eighteen gauge again, you guys. And here is the armature. It's not cut or anything yet, but or or hammered or anything, but little loops under there that help hold everything together. But they're hidden once the pearls go in. So, okay, great. Hope to see you back for that, guys. Mwah. Um, I hope that you uh, register for my blog. I also just added a new feature on it. It's called this old this old Adobe brick house, and you get to see some of the things. It's getting real interesting around here. Um, with uh, at first when we moved in, we had to you know update boring things like air systems and electricity and plumbing and stuff like that. Well, now we're going to be doing some remodeling. So I hope you can join us. Mwah. Love you guys. Thanks for thanks for being here. Adios.